Hey, what's up guys? Um, so today I just want to make a short kind of um, tutorial on how to fill out an application for the art world, uh, namely an application uh, that I'm personally working on right now um, is for a residency. Um, an artist residency that's going to occur this year they're having a call for artists right now um, with the application deadline uh, being today so you know naturally I'm waiting till the last day but it shouldn't be too hard uh, I had gone over the application process uh, on their website I just kind of read through their their application guidelines and it seems pretty straightforward um, so I'm just gonna uh, take a few minutes to kind of go through that process uh, you may be new to to um, applying for art world centric kind of events or opportunities so this is I'm just gonna go through that process in case you may be um, you know really wondering how to approach something like this if it's your first first time if it's not your first time this is more just kind of a process video um, maybe you can uh, learn something from it. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, minimize this. So right now I'm using some, uh, I guess it's called broadcasting software. I'm not sure what, what, what the category of software this is for, but it allows you to screen share and also um, put in several different inputs as far as like cameras and audio um, so I've got a normal webcam here nothing fancy it's a it's an old Logitech um, webcam that I've had for about five years but it's heck don't fix what's not broken um, so this particular application now uh, just on a, as an aside on my desktop here um, is fairly cluttered right now. I like to keep my desktop really um, kind of clean and have everything in folders and subfolders just simply because once you start um, dealing with multiple files, now if you're someone like me that you know um, kind of surfs the internet and I constantly save, I'm taking screenshots, I'm downloading things, um, they're all, it's all in an attempt to kind of save things that I like and you know possibly use them for reference later but you know once you start saving a lot of things or creating a lot of files like video files or art files or anything like that digital art files um, you, your desktop can start to get really cluttered and if you're anything like me I usually save directly to my desktop um, as I'm saving because it puts that file kind of right in the front um, so I can kind of determine what to do with it at a later time um, So I usually just save directly to my desktop and then um, a Day like today. I'm, I'm going to you know kind of review all the things that I saved in the past couple weeks and see what to do with them, but Yeah, okay, so like I said desktop is usually a lot cleaner. I've got folders here um, yeah, so let me just jump into this here. So the, the application that I'm filling out is for um, an organization near me um, called Salsa Install Foundation. And yep. Yeah, and they provide a, a great opportunity for working artists and, um, and also actually uh, parent parent artists uh, I guess they, they just came out with a program where um, to qualify for that that particular residency you have to be a parent um, you know with a, a dependent uh, child so that's really cool but they provide these residencies and I just found out about this through a friend who shared it I guess they came across it uh, on Salsa Installs Instagram um, and it's a really cool cool organization that provides these residencies uh, between two-week residencies, four-week residencies, um, 
for visual artists, uh, painting and sculpture, and then they also provide the, the same residencies for photographers and writers, fiction, creative, nonfiction, and poetry. So they're, you know, I, I don't know too much about the organization other than what's found on their website, but um, they're doing, it looks like they're, they're providing really a great opportunity for, for artists in my area. Now this particular residency is limited to uh, New York State residents, um, but anybody, any artist in the state can apply, which um, is cool. So a lot of the times when I approach um, an opportunity, um, you know, I really make sure that I read through all of the details that the opportunity, that the organization um, presents to me. So these organizations, and the reason why this is important, and I have a little experience sitting on the other side of the table, is when organizations start putting together these programs, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of like-minded and good intentioned people um, that have a mission that they want to fulfill, um, whether it be uh, like this one providing um, opportunities for for New York State resident uh, resident artists, or it could be you know a nonprofit that's you know really targeting on something like you know um, disadvantaged youth from inner cities or uh, you know minority women. The, these organizations are a lot of the times very f focused on a, a singular mission and then it's not to say that they're they're you know excluding uh, members of the community but they want to emphasize particular members of the community um, so this I, I'm sorry I got on a tangent but what ends up happening is that um, when the, when these particular organizations start putting together, um, programs and opportunities um, they're very specific in in who they want to reach and what they want to see from the people that they want to reach um, so uh, in essence what I, I'm, I'm trying to say is just like any good um, you know applicant let's say to a job or a college um, and in this case uh, this opportunity from the organization like any good applicant you absolutely 100 percent 110 percent have to study and do your research on the particular organization on a base level that shows your level of interest it shows that you're you're getting to learn this organization and what they have to offer um so it's kind of like dating you know you you want to get to know the person that you're you know, going on a date with and uh, possibly continuing to have a extended relationship with. So I like to, you know, I mean, the, I, you go through the about us. I just hit, I click every tab and I'm not saying, you know, spend hours on the website or reading about these places, but, you know, a quick overview will give you an idea of how the organization structured what their mission is you know if you know the, the kind of personality uh, that they may have um, so I, I do a, a quick look at their about section you know um, check out you know who's on who's on their leadership team um, so like this you know um, I'm not gonna get too deep into this but this will show you like you know, board of directors, this will kind of show you who you may be meeting um, in the near future. Um, and it gives a little bit of their background um, so that you see that these people are like minded and, you know, they're not they're not going to be your adversaries, so to speak. So the one thing that um, a lot of the times uh, people have a tendency to do is get really um, intimidated by filling out an application, intimidated by the application process, intimidated by um, entering into kind of a tribe or a circle of people that you don't know. Um, and naturally that's going to give someone fear and a little anxiety. Um, but the one thing about going through 
the pay, uh, a website, an organization's website, is that it, it allows you to kind of accl acclimate and familiarize yourself with um, these people, kind of putting a face to a name. And it, it I think it's tremendously beneficial because it, it just allows you to um, kind of ease any anxieties or tensions that you have because you're, you're seeing that these people are much like you and you kind of just want to be um, on the other side of this application process, AKA uh, being accepted. So I check out all the pages, um, kind of look to see what they're all about, but let's just jump into the application process. So let's go here. Oops, I'm gonna go to residencies. This is a juried residency. So, oh, I'm already there. So this gives, um, so definitely, definitely what you want to take time doing is when you're going through an application, and I can't stress this enough, I cannot stress this enough, make sure that, and you've learned this in, in uh, grade school and high school, um, make sure that you answer all points of the question. You know, never leave a stone unturned. Uh, when answering an application um, because every single point that the application um, asks for, um, every kind of facet or, or something like that, every detail is is purposely thought out. Um, and it's, you know, I, I can tell you that uh, this is kind of a base level filter for the um, the reviewers of the application, you know, whether it's a manager or, you know, for the, for in this particular case, a jury, this is a base level filter to see if the, uh, um, the person applying has an, a certain level of attention to detail, you know, um, they just want to see that you're able to kind of thoroughly and carefully read through all of the aspects that they, they want you to touch on. And address those. Um, and if they say, if it says, you know, uh, we only want 500 words in the application, don't make it more than 500 words. It's uh, they purposely set these certain um, kind of uh, parameters to see if you have an attention to detail and if you can, um, you know, kind of take notice of that. So this. Uh, so oh, what, what I was going to say is that um, on this particular page, on the app, this, um, yeah, on, on this particular page, I'm reading through very carefully to see what the program's about, what the amenities are, um, you know, date range of, you know, in this case, uh, the residency dates um, and details about what the artist gets if they get um, chosen. You know, this is pretty cool. Uh, this one, you know, these residencies are f four week or two weeks. And then it gives the, the date range of um, when they are. And then it also gives, it shows, you know, what the artist gets. And this is fantastic. This is absolutely a, 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 a perk about this particular um, program. $200 stipend for artists and writers, $375 or $750 stipend for other artists, spacious private apartment with ample desk space. Look at this. So it's absolutely a fantastic program. The people at Salsa Install and um, the, uh, the namesake of this organization have just done a great job and they have just a great mission. So enough of that. Let's, let's go here. So the first thing that this says is a direct link to our submittable application portal can be found at the bottom of the application guidelines page. So I'm just going to go. It's linked there. And it, you know, this might seem like a lot when you're first kind of jumping in. Um, I've, I've gone through a number of applications in the past. And once you do a number of them, you'll start to see that there's a certain kind of formula and structure uh, there in the application process. So your your mind is more in tuned and trained to kind of look uh, like know where to look in terms of, you know, what the applications are asking for. 
I'm jumping down to this preparing for your application material. Okay. Um, more detailed application instructions specific to each discipline are included within submittable. So submittable is the, the form, the online form that they use to accept applications. Um, you know, in the past, it was probably a lot more clunky, but a lot of, there's a lot of uh, tech companies out there that had uh, folks mostly in forms. So <laughs> I'm sorry, if you guys didn't notice, I go on tons of tangents. Just, I'll just start rambling. But let's get back to this. So here, you know, as soon as you see bullet points, you know that those are going to be uh, important things, um, important pieces of uh, criteria that you're going to have to meet. So first one, basic personal information and a preference regarding residency dates. A resume, not seen by the jury. This can be any length and can be named whatever you'd like. Contact information for two personal references and an artist statement. So right there, that's pretty much, you know, going to be the meat of this application process. Um, artist statement, this one's a, this one is limiting for all disciplines. We ask for a short statement about your work, no longer than one page. So luckily this is going to be, you know, they, they, they're only looking for 400 word range. So I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. And that's, I love short and sweet things. Um, work samples. And uh, yada, 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 yada. So I'm sorry. Uh, after going on a whole spiel about um, carefully reading through things, I'm gonna just buzz through this stuff so right now at, at this point I'm gonna go to the bottom click here to submit I'm on the submittable I'm going through submittable right now so this is the actual application form um, and I know because I've already gone through this I'm going to choose my the application that uh, I want to work on so for my case I'm going to do painting sculpture visual arts two-week residency and I was considering the four week and it sounded like real a lot of fun but it's also kind of a long time that's a whole month but I uh, my summer is packed uh, all of the four week residencies happen in the summer and my summer's packed with weddings, so the two-week alternative is in the fall, or, or late late summer, early fall, um, and that's more suited to my liking. So, painting, sculpture, visual arts, two-week residency ends on January 23rd. That's today, in 10 hours. I'd like to get this done in about half an hour. Okay, so right here pretty much is the application very short and sweet um, sh short 400 word uh, artist statement big a uh, big big uh, qualifier here on this particular application please do not identify or credential yourself for example your statement should not mention where you went to school or where you've exhibited your work or any honor publication residency, etc., that would normally be included within a resume. Simply talk about the work that the jury is reviewing. So um, that's a big point because I, I'm guessing that what they want to do is give all artists an equal uh, consideration, and they understand that during the the jury process, you know, um, humans. W we will have a chance to get biased by, you know, knowing too much information sometimes. So they don't want to know if you've been published or how many galleries that you've been in because they want to give, you know, someone who has maybe zero experience but tons of talent and drive the same opportunity as a well-seasoned artist. So, um, yeah, that's a big point. 
Uh, then I'm going to work on a file list. So part of the reason a, fi a file list is, um, you know, kind of text that accompanies the images of work that you're going to submit. Um, they want to know uh, basically, you know, the medium, the title of the work, um, uh, the size and dimension of the work, and uh, kind of a, a statement on that. But the file list, uh, you'll find that uh, many times, you know, if you're working, let's say you're going to display at a gallery or, um, you know, uh, have your own show. Uh, leading up to that, you know, the organi organizers or gallery owners, um, they, they just kind of want uh, some initial communication as to uh, what pieces you're going to include, how big they are, you know, how much it gives them an idea of how much room that they need to make in their gallery. Um, and so it's, it's just kind of a a cursory um, overview of what you are submitting. So the reason why I, I wanted to start this instructional video is because, oh my God, this has already been 20 minutes long. Holy crap. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I talk a lot. We're gonna stop this. Okay, so I stopped this because I, I just saw the, the timer, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and full send it and try to buzz through this last point so it doesn't extend too far. But the, the reason why I started this um, instructional video is because I was kind of um, dragging my feet in terms of the process and uploading pictures and all of that stuff. But, um, you know, I just wanted to show you what my process is uh, to help kind of ease your process so that... Um, you know, once you get kind of this groundwork set up, uh, you know, in further uh, future applications, you'll have kind of a, a system that can, um, you know, help speed the process. So this, the first thing that I'm starting to do is please upload a one page file list and up to 10 samples of your work. So and up to 10 samples of your work. And this is very specific here at 72 dpi and 1000 pixels in the largest direction okay um please save your images as a jpeg and keep them under two megabyte megabytes you will upload the file list and images one at a time so this underscores the attention to detail um that the app app uh the creators of the applicant uh, the application um, want to uh, uh, kind of stress so 72 dpi 1000 pixels you know you might be wondering oh I'll just upload a picture and most pictures let's say you take them from your phone they're gonna save at about three or four megabytes so it, you know this application says keep them under two megabytes so essentially when I came across this, I was like, oh, this the, they're looking for small file sizes. So the very first thing that I thought of is, I know the just from my experience uh, with photography and stuff like that, your phone is taking pictures larger than two megabytes. Um, unless you change it in your settings to take lower quality pictures. So my first thought is, crap, I'm going to have to downsize. Um, a lot of the images that I already have of my artwork. So that's exactly what I did. Um, first, I'm going to my folder here, my art folder. And I already have a, I mean, I have folders um, categorized digital art, mural art. Uh, I had a solo show, yada, yada, yada. This is kind of where I keep kept some images of, uh, of my work and there was you know uh, on a couple occasions i had to go through and do an inventory and just set up all of my artwork and start taking pictures of them because i knew that i would have to upload them and send them at some point so uh what i first did let me pick one now here okay so this particular piece right here this one was sold as and is in a private collector's home but i'm going to include this in my application because i really like it uh, like it so this particular piece um really quickly is i'm going to go down to properties just to show you the size and uh, details about this this image this is four megabytes large 
The application says keep your your images under two megabytes. Um, so this is four megabytes large, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to make it smaller. So what I, you know, a quick internet search will um, give you a list of maybe some free online software uh, for photo resizing. So that's what you would image search, photo or image resizing. Um, I didn't do that because I already had some free software that I've been using for years. It's called Photoscape that I already knew had um, resizing capabilities. So shameless plug for them. Um, I would go ahead and download Photoscape. It's up. It looks like this. Um, up here on the top left, you, you can kind of see what they're uh, the graphic is Photoscape. Um, it's a, a really great, uh, kind of simple uh, photo editing tool, but it's it's fairly powerful for what you get. Um, and that's what I'm going to use. So I've got Photoscape opened up. I'm going to go ahead and drag the image that I chose into it. Here you go. So I've got my file here. As you can see, um, it's 4.1 megabytes and it also shows you the dimensions by pixels 2806 by 2806 now if you can remember on the application it says please do not make it so that it's over 1000 pixels on the largest um, in the largest direction so I know that I'm going to have to make this smaller which right here there's a resize option and thankfully all I can do all I have to do is drag this slider for the ratio until I have an image that's less than 1000 pixels in the longest direction in this case 982 and 982 uh, this particular image is pretty much a square so I'm gonna hit OK. As you can see, that it that makes it by dragging the slider, it's about 35% of the original size. Cool. So now you can see that my photo is 982 by 982, although the file size is still 4.1 megabytes. Well, we can um, change that here when I hit save. But really quickly, if you want to check out this uh, this user interface and and Kind of the offerings about this uh, program you'll see all of the you can sharpen your image brighten color film effect it's it's stuff basically that your phone can do but this is for the desktop so i'm going to hit save right here you can see that if i save it as jpeg it's going to save it um, with the file size 694 kilobytes so that's going to be under the two megabyte limit and I'm gonna click DPI here make sure that it's 72 you know a lot of high quality image files are around 300 so 72 is what they're asking for so boom the application says under two two megabytes I've got it it's uh, at 694 kilobytes and then 72 DPI click save and designated folder so now I already have a folder that I started a whole new one called salsa install there you go and I already have four images that I'm going to be submitting um, and I'm gonna go ahead and continue this process um, you know resizing my images and yeah that's the first part of this one adios